Collimating a Newtonian telescope is essential to optimizing the images that we can get from these instruments. It's also one of the trickiest parts to using a Newtonian and as such there are a number of different tools to help with this process. In the past, I've just used a laser for collimating my Newtonians, which can work pretty good for getting a coarse collimation or for slower Newtonians. However, in the pursuit of optimizing the DBS114 astrograph, which is relatively fast at a focal ratio of about f3.95, I really need a better tool. So I built a DIY camera collimator, the decal. As far as I know, there's only one commercially available device like this, the OCAL, and it's about $300. The decal can be constructed for about $30, but can we get 90% of the OCAL's performance for 10% of the cost? I got this little Arduino USB webcam from Amazon for about 30 bucks. You might be able to find something cheaper out there, but this is convenient because it already has the mounting holes and the image sensor and lens are right in the middle and it's a square and it's USB. So as far as hooking this thing up is really easy and convenient. For attaching to the telescope, we really just need a simple 3D printed adapter bracket. And then I'm using a 42 millimeter threaded extension tube so I can thread it directly onto my camera's image train. It also turns out you can totally 3D print 42 millimeter by 0.7 millimeter threads, really fine pitch thread. I just use a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and the standard 0.2 millimeter layer height and these threads work perfectly fine. Not sure I would trust these threads with a heavier camera or expensive camera or imaging train setup, but for this little webcam, it is perfectly suitable. One big advantage to a camera collimation device like this is it can attach directly to the image train where the main imaging camera attaches. So the collimation device is seeing the exact same view that your imaging camera will see. I'm using SharpCap to view the camera and control the exposure settings. I don't think you really need SharpCap for this, really just any kind of camera viewing app will work. SharpCap is just kind of convenient because I already have it installed on the mini PC that runs my telescope and it has all the exposure controls right here on the side and the ability to zoom the image. Then we use another app called Al's Collimation Aid for overlaying concentric circles. This is what we'll use to align the various parts of the telescope in the collimation process. This is kind of a legacy app. It's kind of just some executable that I found on the internet and actually would end up finding a better tool. So don't use this, but you can kind of get an idea of the process here. Okay, so with this first test, I think this device is showing some promise and I decided I want to make a proper enclosure and make this look like a real product. Thanks to all the downloads for the DBS114 and my other projects on printables, I finally earned enough points to get a free roll of Perusa Mint from Perusa. This is a very satisfying galaxy red color they call it. It's kind of a metallic-y glossy red. You can also see I went through a large number of prototypes getting the thread fitment to work right. The first iteration of the cover was just a press fit that slides on here and it didn't quite grip good enough, but it was a start. And then I made this little split cable gland gripper adapter to sort of try to neatly secure the cable into the cover.
the idea was for this to also be just kind of a press fit. Maybe it would work good enough. And, well, yes, yeah, sort of it works, but clearly this will need another iteration or two. Okay, so check it out. I made this little sort of 3D printed cable gland like thing. It's similar design. It's split, so it goes around the cable, and then you have this little threaded nut to tighten it all together. Still a little bit fiddly to install. You insert the two sides of the cable gland holder through the top of the housing like this. Then slide the nut over the cable on the inside of the housing cover and tighten it down. The nut both secures the cable gland to the top of the housing and also helps to squeeze the two sides of the holder together and sort of pinch on the cable a little bit. It's not a proper waterproof cable gland, but nothing about this device is going to be or needs to be waterproof. So for this application, I think it's going to work just fine. I also incorporated these snaps to the side of the cover. So the cover just kind of snaps in place on the housing and is held nice and secure. This makes the whole thing pretty simple and rather satisfying to assemble. And again, to use this, you'll start by removing your main imaging camera. Also, don't forget to remove your filter. If you have like a light pollution filter in there, that will make it a little bit harder for this camera to see. I definitely spent some number of minutes fiddling with exposure settings, wondering why the image was so dark. And then I realized that filter was in there. So from these early tests, I realized that we're going to need to be able to see the draw tube, see the inside of the draw tube, because that will be not necessarily concentric to the shadow of the secondary mirror. So we need a reflective surface on the inside of the camera. For that, we just need a simple 3D printed donut shaped part. And then on Amazon, I found this cool reflective tape. So we'll just stick this on here. I switched to a shorter length extension tube. It turns out you don't really need a very long tube, so the shorter one will actually work a little bit better. And the new reflective donut just press fits into place and we're good to go. So that's it, pretty simple device. I also made a little cover for it too, so you can protect the lens. So I'm not gonna go into an in-depth tutorial on how to use this, how to collimate your telescope. There are better tutorials out there, which I will link in the description below, but I'll give you some tips, some pointers that I found specifically when using this device and for collimating the DBS-114. First of all, head on over to GitHub and grab yourself this excellent application called Collimation Circles. This application does pretty much exactly everything we need. If you're not into Linux and compiling binaries, they do have pre-compiled binaries for you down here. Tip number one is to stuff a paper towel or just something in the tube to block the secondary's view of the primary mirror. We're just going to align the secondary mirror to the focus or draw tube and the having the reflection of the primary mirror in there can uh, make that somewhat misleading. 
Here I have SharpCap running and the Collimation Circles app just runs as an overlay. It's like a transparent window that runs as an overlay to the video feed from SharpCap. So I have four circles set up. The red circle is the perimeter of the focus or draw tube. Then the green circle is the perimeter of the secondary mirror. Then the dark blue circle is the perimeter of the reflection of the camera inside the draw tube. So that's the reflective surface that we just added that you can't see yet. And then the light blue circle is the mirror center dot. So here you can see I'm just rotating the secondary mirror by hand to get it to be as circular as possible and concentric with that green circle. This is where you want the paper towel or something to block the primary mirror so you can really clearly see the edge of the secondary mirror. You also need a fair amount of light for this to work. Unfortunately, this camera is not super sensitive, so you may need to turn on additional lights or shine light directly down the telescope tube. The next tip is to identify one of the spider veins. You can see I'm putting my thumb here, come into the camera view, and then rotate that to the top. This is the top spider vein, so I've identified it with my thumb, and then I'm gonna rotate the camera so that this is in the vertical position. This will make all the adjustments much easier because now I will know left screw is left side, right screw is right side, so my orientation is all sorted out. And here I've got pretty close collimation. This is where I've been imaging from the last few nights. And I think this collimation is pretty close, about as good as I've been able to get. Maybe it's still not quite perfect, but I think it's good enough. At least I'm satisfied with how this has been performing. So this process can be very tricky and tedious. I'm not gonna go into the details here, partially because I don't really fully understand myself what I'm doing. All I can tell you is watch the very good tutorial videos down below and just know that you may need to iterate on this several times. If you get frustrated, just walk away, take a break, come back, start over, and be meticulous and methodical about your approach and eventually you will arrive at a pretty good collimation. So how well does this device work? Well, here is a before image of the Orion Nebula. This has been processed, but look at, notice the these gigantic sort of extra fanning light um, diffraction fan. There's not diffraction spikes. There's diffraction spikes, and then there's this this fanning pattern. You can see it's on the left side of like all these bright stars here, right? So I'm not sure if that's a result of collimation or I think it was maybe the secondary mirror was twisted or something. I'm not quite sure what was causing that, but it's rather, it's rather displeasing in this image. And then here is the Horsehead Nebula. We can see the same thing, same part of sky, same kind of thing going on. This sort of extra diffraction sort of fanning, blooming diffraction on the side of the star. It's not diffraction spikes, but something else going on. Maybe it's bad collimation, maybe it's something else inside the tube. So here is the same target, the Horsehead Nebula, after using the decal and going through and being very thorough about the collimation and the alignment of the secondary mirror, you can see it's pretty much that, that fanning diffraction is pretty much entirely gone. This is pretty symmetric. Although interestingly, on the on the right side of the image here, we do see maybe a little bit of it. So I'm not sure if it's the same thing, but it's kind of just these two stars over here. Maybe that's some field curvature or something going on. I'm not quite sure, but uh, overall the images I think are significantly improved. Definitely the star shapes are improved. And you know, this for being shot from my balcony here in the light pollution and with such a small telescope, uh, really capable, really a lot of cool detail in here. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with uh, what I'm able to get now. And then one last target, one last image to share. This is the very glorious Jellyfish Nebula, a supernova remnant. This is kind of a work in progress project right here, up to eight hours of data on here, but it is very faint, so especially imaging from the light pollution, these dim areas just take a lot of time to bring out. So this is eight hours. I really want to get to like 
I don't know, 20 hours on this uh, target and, and really kind of increase the signal to noise ratio on here. But you can see I'm getting very good detail. The stars are gonna be super round because I did run Blur Exterminator on them, but they are pretty round in the individual subs by themselves. So I'm really pleased with the way the telescope is working. And uh, part of that is because of the improved collimation from this little device. Okay, so that is the decal, a very simple to print and assemble device for calibrating, for collimating your Newtonian telescopes. Is it as good as the commercial ones that are two or $300? Honestly, I think it's pretty, pretty darn close. I, I've been using it the last several nights for imaging, and this has gotten my telescope to be, I, I think, in the best quality that I've been able to get out of it. Uh, and for something that's pretty easy to print and assemble and pretty inexpensive, I think it's a really great tool. I, it was really worth the time uh, for me to invest in designing and building it. And I think for you, it will be definitely worth the time to print and assemble it. If you'd like to support the channel, I would very much appreciate that. Just, of course, liking the videos and subscribing, sharing all that stuff definitely helps. Leaving comments down below. Let me know what you think of the project. Also, I have affiliate links. So if you're going to build this, check the affiliate links in the description or on the bill of materials on the printables page or on my website. Affiliate links really help the channel. If you're going to purchase the parts to build this project or anything, just using those affiliate links is really awesome. And also you can join my Patreon or support the channel by joining as a member down below. Okay, thanks for checking this one out, guys. Been a lot of fun. I'll see you on the next video.